Hi, let's talk about the oral cavity and the sublingual space. So the oral cavity can be divided into two major regions. The oral vestibule, which is everything that is superficial to the gingivae and the dental arches. So basically everything between the, uh, the, the labial surfaces and the buccal surfaces and the, uh, the teeth and the gingiva is the oral vestibule. And then deep to the gingivae and the dental arches is the oral cavity proper. And that oral cavity proper is going to run from the roof of the mouth, which we can't see here, down to the mylohyoid muscles. Anything below the floor of the oral cavity here um, is going to be the sublingual space, which is a part of the oral cavity proper. So that's uh, it's kind of a, an important thing to, to wrap your mind around that the oral cavity proper is um, everything from the roof of the mouth down to the mylohyoid muscles. And those mylohyoid muscles are going to be the floor of the oral cavity proper. But um, dividing the oral cavity from the sublingual space, which is part of the oral cavity proper, is going to be that, uh, that oral mucosa at the, uh, that's contiguous with the ventral surface of the tongue. So here we have a very similar view, um, this time a cadaveric photograph, and the mucosa of the floor of the, uh, the mouth there has been incised and removed. And we're able to see um, some features here. So laterally here, I can see there's one sublingual gland. There's another sublingual gland. Those, when enveloped by mucosa, would be the sublingual folds. I can also see distal portions of the submandibular or Wharton's duct that would be heading out towards the caruncle there to excrete into the oral cavity proper. Um, and just flanking the genioglossus, which is this muscle coming from the, uh, the posterior portion of the mental portion of the mandible up into the tongue, I can see lingual nerves, which are branches of V3. So that, uh, that mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Here is a lateral view of the sublingual space. So here is the tongue. Uh, the mucosa has been removed from the side of the tongue so we can see some of the, uh, the musculature. Here is just a little bit of the mandible. Most of it has been uh, carved away for reference. And um, we have a, a few um, structures here that are going to be very, very obvious to us. Uh, the first being the sublingual gland here. So the sublingual gland is going to occupy quite a, a large portion of the, the sublingual space, flanking that genioglossus muscle, which we can see there. Uh, we can also see um, one of its colleagues, the submandibular gland. The submandibular gland is going to uh, traverse two spaces. So the submandibular space is going to hold the superficial portion of the submandibular gland, which we can see there. And then wrapping around the mandible, we can see the deep uh, lobe of the submandibular gland. Uh, we can also see, um, let's see, it's a little challenging, but we can see the duct. You can see Wharton's duct moving across and then just snuggling the uh, sublingual gland out towards the, uh, the, the caruncle distally. Um, 
We can also see, uh, and this would be coming from the, uh, the infratemporal fossa, the lingual nerve. Coming down, and then it's cradling the duct here. So this is Wharton's duct. I'm just going to color this in. And so there's the, the remainder of the, the lingual nerve wrapping around the duct. So this is a V3 branch coming down. And associated with that lingual nerve is the submandibular ganglion. That submandibular ganglion is uh, getting its uh, pre-ganglionic parasympathetic fibers from corda tympani, which is uh, facial. And then those fibers jump right back on, and then they can serve the submandibular gland. They can serve the sublingual gland. And those corda tympani fibers can continue on with the lingual nerve to serve the anterior two-thirds of the tongue for taste. Um, what else can we see here? Oh, this is an interesting thing. So uh, descending down here laterally and cutting across is the hypoglossal nerve. So that's going lateral to our external carotid artery. Coming across in, so that hypoglossal nerve is going to be an important uh, efferent to the, uh, the tongue muscles. And it has an accompanying vein, so this is a vena comatans of the hypoglossal nerve. Uh, the remainder of that vein has been removed here. And um, let's see if we can see any of the lingual artery here. Um, yes, well, let's, let's start where the, uh, the lingual artery would um, begin from the external carotid, and we can see that originating here from the external carotid artery and heading into the sublingual space. Uh, I imagine that in this next image, we'll get a, a little bit better of a, a look at it. Let's start there. So this might be a little out of order. So here's our external carotid artery, and I'll just follow this lingual artery up. Oh, continue, and then here, it's diving deep to the hyoglossus muscle. running between the hyoid bone and into the tongue, and then it emerges from the anterior margin of the hyoglossus to serve the sublingual space, and there will be deep branches that are actually going into the tongue here. So uh, in this particular image, uh, we've removed the uh, any aspect of the lateral mandible. Um, we still have some of the mandible out towards the uh, the mental region there. Uh, we can see here is the superior border of the thyroid cartilage. There, um, the hyoid bone is going to be approximately there. Um, and we can get a view of the lingual nerve, although this has been displaced superiorly. There's the lingual nerve coming around. The, uh, the submandibular duct has been removed because we've removed the submandibular gland. We get a really nice view of the lingual nerve there. And we can see the hypoglossal nerve here, cutting across, coming over. And one of the things that I wanted to point out to you is that in this posterior portion of the, uh, the sublingual space, uh, the hyoglossus muscle is going to form a partition. And so lateral to that partition, uh, we find things like the lingual nerve and the hypoglossal nerve. And then 
And we'll also have the, uh, the submandibular duct. And then deep or medial to that partition, we'll have the, uh, the lingual artery. Um, so nerves, lateral uh, arteries, deep. Uh, the only little bit of vasculature that we'll also find lateral is the, uh, the vena comitans of the hypoglossal nerve as it, as it traverses that space um, along with the hypoglossal nerve. And now we'll, we'll take a, a view of uh, the lateral uh, or a lateral view of the submandibular space. Um, we can see just one of the, the anterior borders of that. So this is the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. The posterior belly of the digastric muscle has been rotated away. But um, we get a good view of the superficial lobe of the submandibular gland that's in that space. Uh, we can also see 12, so the hypoglossal nerve traversing down. And in this case, it's going deep to the mylohyoid muscle. So here's mylohyoid. Mylohyoid muscle is running from the mylohyoid line of the mandible um, across to the midline to meet its counterpart. So this is the floor of the oral cavity proper. Uh, we can also see uh, in this particular donor uh, that the lingual artery, which is originating there, and the facial artery, which is originating there, are coming from a common trunk. That happens sometime, but here is the lingual artery moving, and it's going deep, deep. And we can see that uh, there's a little bit of the hyoglossus muscle there that's separating the lingual artery from the hypoglossal nerve and its accompanying vein, which we can see there. So we've, uh, we've talked a little bit about the oral cavity and um, a lot about the sublingual space and the submandibular space. One final thing that I'd like to, uh, to leave you on uh, before I sign off in this video is that uh, the sublingual space and the submandibular space um, can communicate with one another. When you go to that posterior border of mylohyoid, uh, those two spaces are contiguous with one another. And as we move posterior to those two spaces, we have the lateral pharyngeal space. And so both the sublingual space and the submandibular space can communicate with that lateral uh, pharyngeal space, which is um, in continuity with the retropharyngeal space. So any sort of um, infection, cellulitis, um, etc., that enters into the, the sublingual space or originates from that uh, submandibular space can then uh, move through the lateral and retropharyngeal spaces, and that's going to uh, encircle the uh, the pharynx, the aerodigestive pathway. And so, this is the uh, the basis for uh, Ludwig's angina, um, which is a, an emergent uh, situation where um, it is a, a severe uh, compromise of of the airway. Thank you very much for your time.